Today, Bill is going to be showing us his brewing operation. Uh, Billy is going to be brewing blueberry beer. Is that correct, Bill? Big Berry. It's Ale. called Big Berry Ale. Seems like it bothers you a lot, Bill, when you hear the dog. Well, cry. because he shouldn't be whining. All right, that, that that's true. It, you know, I, I got kids that quiet. whine, and it's easy to put a muzzle on a dog, but you can't get a muzzle for the kids. Do they, do yes, they have can. muzzles for kids? Anyway, okay. here we are with Bill. Bill's going to describe the brewing process. Bill, one of the questions I have here, come here. One of the questions I have for you is, how did you get involved in brewing, and what what was the start? You know, how did you get interested in brewing? Um, my friend Jim and I at work one day were reading the paper, and they had an advertisement for uh, Kedco in Farmingdale with right. his old homebrewing kits. So we both went and bought kits, and uh, his okay. beers came out great, and my bottles all exploded. They did because I was doing something wrong. So, but it took a while to figure it out. And what did you do that was wrong? Uh, I sugar? scratched. No, I scratched the plastic fermenter, so bacteria got in there, and once it's in the plastic, you can't get rid of it. Oh, so so bacteria. batch after batch, I had infected beer. So basically, bacteria outgasses, right? And I guess that's what caused the bottle. Well, no, it, it, the yeast just went crazy. Well, yeah, it uh, it feeds on the stuff. There you go. Wow! It feeds on the uh, the sugars, and it it overcarbonated, and that's why the bottles exploded. Gotcha. So. T tell us what you're basically doing here. I see. Well, we this is the boiling kettle, right? And this is what they call a mash tun. This is a mash tun. So the process of, of people don't brew beer, right? What do they do? You make Drink. this sugar solution that the yeast eats. Okay. And uh, the byproduct of that is alcohol and carbon dioxide. Okay. So basically, you're just making a uh, sugar solution that's uh, with hops is, is, a, is added the bitterness and the flavoring and uh, some just dripping. Yeah, it's from the... Oh, okay. Uh, so what you're doing basically is you, you heat water to right. a certain temperature, you add the grain and the hot water in the mash tun. Okay, so we already have the grain in here. The grain is in there. And we put the, the water temp, the hot boiling water in here. Well, not boiling, you, you heat it to a certain temperature and then you correct. To okay. what you, that what just you want right, 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 right on your head. Yeah. So, so, so we did that, and you had mm -hmm. a paddle, and you mixed it up. Yes. So after. And if so you want to look in there, just take the top off, and just don't fall off the ladder. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Boiling. Okay. Boiling. It's 155 degrees. It's 155. Okay. All right. So now, different temperatures give you different uh, finishes. Okay. So uh, the higher, the higher the temperature, the less alcohol there is, more body. I see. Lower temperature, more alcohol, less body. Gotcha. So or it's reverse. We have to get like more spirit. water into the mash tun. Well, now after this rests for an hour's time, right? The enzymes are breaking down the grain into simple sugars. Okay. So, which is what you need for the yeast to eat to make carbon dioxide and, and what, alcohol. And what kind of yeast are we going to be using? Do you have Ale. a yeast set up already or do you have, mm -hmm. what do you have, packets or what do you... No, it's a, I made a yeast starter. You take, well, it seems like now everybody's getting into like using dry yeasts again. Right. Um, they're all liquid yeasts that you can use that come in a pack. You have can to... you get a yeast that was started back in 1600? Um, is there? I heard like. Well, a lot of breweries are going to reuse their yeast. They're going to. They actually have like a chemistry lab set up. Right. You, it's right. got to be sterile, and right. you have to wash the yeast. And um, I don't have that capability. So this it's is easier something just that can to spend be alive. the five dollars and get the two packets of yeast and do a starter. I gotcha. Which you boil a small amount of powdered uh, extract. Right. You, then you add the yeast to it, and it ferments, and okay. at that point you've started the yeast propagating. Right. So when you add that to the two fermenters there, the glass fermenters, right. then when the finished beer is put on top of that, it'll start to ferment a lot quicker and uh, wow. much, much more. It really sounds like you're definitely more than just a novice. Uh, well, no, I've, uh, I've been brewing since, like I said, 92 when we first bought this house. So Wow. That's really great, Bill. Uh -huh. uh, so after we get it out of the mash tun, 
what happens? We transfer it to... Well, what's going to happen next is I re start it to heat the water again in here. We're going to bring we need, this up to a boil. boil. Yes. The, uh, the finish amount is going to be 10 gallons. Okay. So I know how much I need in there. Uh, I have the chilling coil in there also, which is a big copper coil. Right. So that's heated so it's sanitary. Right. So I, I just put that in the very beginning so this way it's sitting in there for a long time. I see. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you bring this up to a boil. Okay. And you continue to fill the mash tun up. Okay. And you start to drain the bottom sugars out. So okay, and that's what the, the grain actually is makes. Here. Yes, the grain actually makes a uh, filter bed, so it filters out a lot of the, the uh, solids. And... Not impurities, but solids. At this point, really, you don't need to be sterile. So er, anything that's filtered the only thing, out. The only time you need to be sterile is when you're dealing with the final wort solution. Okay. Once it's cooled, because so, after 140 degrees, everything's sterile. So once we get it out of here, do we transfer this to another? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to run it out of that into these pails, and then they're going to get added to the boiling kettle once that's empty. Okay. And then we start a boil, and then we add hops, and then we cool it down, and it gets added to the uh, it gets added to the fermenters, which will right. have the yeast in it. That's good. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break here, and we're going to come back when we're ready for the next step. Do the full thing either. Right. Now, what you do, you're going to slowly rinse the grains. Just leave it. That's pretty slow. It's not even coming out yet. And this is called sparging, so this is mm -hmm. all waste? No. Oh, this is the uh, this is what we're doing now is we're rinsing with the hot water the sugars that are broken down right. from using the mash. I see. So this answer. is valuable stuff. This is what's going to become our beer. Okay. All right. Cool. It's like a filtering process. Well, what you're doing is you're rinsing the sugars out of the grain. I got it. You hate the smell of beer? No, no, the beer is fine. Some of those happy things, and you oh. don't let them let you make you taste any of that. The amount of bitterness in the beer. Okay. So we're using a hop calculator that's available on the internet. All right. So so we're we're talking about a specific gravity of 1048, and 10 gallons is the final volume. So the first edition is not going to be 6.0. It's going to be 4.0. Right. So we're going to change that. So you have to calculate and then what this is. Well, we're going to add two ounces and see what that comes out as far as the final grab, uh, final bitterness. How does that smell? It smells like hops. Wow. It looks like rabbit food. You want to try one, no, Julie? No, you don't want to try it. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. Just watch yourself. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, it's going to take the whole thing. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely down. Mm -hmm. That's good, Bill. Okay, so we have two. Nice job. So then so. we transfer it from here into And now here. it's in the boiling kettle, and now we're going to light the boiling kettle back up again. And the coils are in here for the, when Pulling. we cool it. Watch yourself. Oh, wow. Cool. All right. All right, I think we got it. So we're going to bring this up to a boil. Mm-hmm. Another little chilling coil. Do you have to chill up before you check the gravity? Yes. Because no? otherwise it, it 
changes because as things get colder, right, the gravity changes. See, this is already set up for this. Wow. You, you designed this with that, mm -hmm. uh, with knowing with that, that you were Also oh. for cleaning bottles, if you use the... So we're really not concerned with uh, sanitation at this point because it's going to go back into the boiling kettle. Right. How fast is that cool? Is that pretty fast? Well, let's see, it's going out. up. So this should be close to boiling because it was boiling. Fill it up so much, Phil. Because what? take a gravity reading so yes I'm gonna recheck the gravity and see where we are and then we gotta decide where we're going as far as that goes all right we're at 10 1.040 is that good Bill well now we're we know that we're gonna come up about five to seven points spin it good shot. This is the yeast starter, mm -hmm. which I started two days ago. It's an ale yeast, packaged yeast, with wort we made. I'm going to add it to the fermenters, one at a time. And then we're going to take the rounds wrap, Joe. <laughs> You're part of this brewing thing too. Come here. All right. Drip it in there and take this and soak it with the alcohol. No, not that. Just take that off the take that off the deck. Put the paper on the deck and pour alcohol on it. Not a lot, but a little bit. And then wipe the aluminum foil down. Not both sides, just the one. Really? Yeah, just the one. The one that comes in contact. And then put it over the top of the fermenter. We're good? For that one. Crush it around. And then here's your other one. So I'm making beer and I'm drinking beer, so I don't know what's uh, better is uh, making or drinking. I would say drinking is uh, the best. No, because if you if nobody made beer... We'll get Bill on the... Uh, if nobody beer. made beer, you couldn't drink beer. So. He, sa he sounds like he's making a lot of uh, and sense. In case nobody knows, in Joe's Cyberland following, <laughs> the Egyptians were the first ones to make beer. And it was by accident. Really? They used to keep their grains out in clay pots in the atmosphere and they fermented because of wild yeast. So they drank the liquids and wow. found it was good. That's pretty incredible. And then it became a religious thing mm -hmm. with wine, beer, whatever. So everybody in, other than the Islam people, I think, you know, this celebrate is a, this an is alcohol great. product in one way in their That's religion. That's a great story. They do. I mean, I, I don't think Islam allows alcohol in their... I have no idea. That's the only group of people that don't celebrate alcohol is the in Islam Well, who celebrates religion. alcohol? Though? The Catholic religion, the Protestants... Celebrating alcohol. The Egyptians. No. <laughs> alcohol has been involved in every religion since really since they finally found out about alcohol the egyptian stage the catholic religion if you go to mass you know what's amazing they have wine and they have the 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 host they have the host and they have the wine mm -hmm. although when we were kids and you know we weren't allowed to have the, the wine you know i gotta tell you something it, it's ab absolutely amazing what you can learn here at uh, billy bridefax house it's, it's just a, a definite education so. 
Thank you, Bill. I no. appreciate that. There's also, there's also other well, brewing well. methods either. You know, they have mead, which is made from honey, which was through the Vikings. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think that they... What is the... Uh, why do they call it a honeymoon? I have no idea because there's honey in it and there's... Uh, well, they call it a honeymoon for what reason? It came from the Vikings. They used to make mead. Honey mead. Mead is made from honey. So they had their honeymoon, which the mead was supposed to uh, procreate a uh, firstborn son. And that's what honey mead, honeymoon, wow. comes from. <laughs> that's the absolute truth. There you go. Awesome. Will work for me. All right, hold on. You don't have to open it. Just shake it. No, pick it up and shake it. Okay. What happened? You don't know. You did something wrong, Joe. All right, Bill, so we're going to be cooling now, is that... We're cooling. Yeah. Yes, we're cooling. So basically what happens is uh, we got a cooling coil in here, so come up here and... You can see the coil. Half-inch copper. And a that's going to be... Uh, cooling coil. Yeah, it's going to run uh, cold water through it, and it's going to cold... You still didn't tell them what it's about, the technical issues. Oh, yeah, that's your job, Bill. So go ahead. Bill's on. It's a half inch cooling coil. Because Joe's a slacking at this it, point. Uh, no, when you cool the wort down to the point where you're going to introduce it to the yeast, which is in the fermenters, and fruit, because this was the beer that we're commemorating with Joe's dad. Right. It was big berry wheat. First time I brewed it was probably about seven years ago. Uh, also had it at my dad's house for Fall of the Stag. But it's a purple beer. As you can see from the fruit, it's going to be purple. Uh, it's a really, really good drinking beer. Very flavorful. Very good. And uh, Joe's going to work on uh, labels for bottles for his dad, because we're going to bottle some of this. Mm -hmm. Transfer it the hose from one to the other. Just don't touch, touch the top of the bottle, like you did. Alright, so your batch is going to be compromised. It doesn't come out good if you're full. Alright, put it it's... together, put it in. Don't push all the way down. No, you I don't have to go crazy. That's it. So jo Joe's dad's beer is complete. So, it's not complete until we drink it. Well, we're going to have to spread your dad's ashes somewhere mm -hmm. and pour that beer over the top of it. Mm -hmm. the ashes? Or not. At least he gets to have a really good beer for his last send-off. I guess we could do that. I have a heart. I, I think it's sealed though. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep Are you going to no, keep it's, it's a little thing, yeah. It's, it's sealed, like a you sealed. You want to keep them? Your dad yeah. looking over you? I don't know. Like, wait. Here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you should say with that. That's probably the bottom of the yeast, which is more active. Which is also good because it's a little bit less beer in that thing. 